What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. Moving on to the next video, we're now gonna talk about sample size versus acceptance and rejection regions. And I'm actually gonna use the same example that I used in the previous video. So please watch that video if you haven't watched it yet because there's gonna be a lot of carryover to this one. And in that previous example, we said that the null hypothesis for the average price of a home in a population in a country was 400,000. That was the currently accepted truth. And we're gonna be doing some hypothesis testing to see whether that's not true anymore, right? So testing the alternative hypothesis where that average is not 400,000. And in the population, we said that there's 100,000 homes. So we don't have enough resources to go to all 100,000. So we gotta take a sample. And so, as I mentioned before, we can assume that this population is going to uh, follow a normal distribution. And if this is correct, if that's the actual mean, then we know it should be in the middle over here. And so, what I want to do in this video is I wanna go over a couple of scenarios. So I'm gonna make a couple of different columns here. So we're gonna have sample size, and then we're gonna have the sample mean. And then what I want us to do is talk through whether we're going to reject that null or not based on this data. So this is not gonna be objective, it's gonna be subjective. We're just gonna be sort of using our intuition to see based on the results we get here, should we reject that null hypothesis or not. Now, let's say the first scenario, we take a sample size of 10 homes and let's say that the average of that sample is 500,000. Kinda of went over this in the previous video as well. So 500,000, that's gonna be like over here, let's say. And let's keep these in thousands, just so we don't flood this uh, axis with zeros. So let's say 500 is right there. So notice it's a pretty good difference from that null hypothesis, from that hypothesized average of 400,000 so should we reject the null? Is that big enough of a difference? It is a pretty big difference, but what's holding me back from rejecting it is this over here, this sample size. Notice how small it is. 10 homes out of 100,000, right? You're going to come up with a conclusion about the null just from 10 homes. It's kind of hard to sell, right? So would we reject the null? I would say no. Even though 500,000 is a good uh, difference from 400, it's not big enough of a sample size for me to feel comfortable in rejecting that null. So I'm gonna say no to that one. Okay, let's do another scenario. Let's say we take a sample size of 10 homes and let's say that the average of those 10 homes is $5 million, right? So that's gonna be like way out over here. That's 5 million. So notice that that difference is a lot larger than the 500,000, right? But again, what's kind of holding me back is this sample size of 10. It's still only 10 homes out of 100,000, right? Even though that deviation is really large, I might feel more comfortable in rejecting the null in this scenario versus this one. All right, just because that deviation is so much larger. But what's holding me back is still that sample size. So what I'm gonna say here is maybe, but probably not. All right, it's just not large enough, not representative enough of a sample of that population. Now, let's take another scenario. Let's say that we sample 95,000 homes. And from those 95,000 homes in that sample, the average 
is 401,000. So 95,000 homes out of 100,000 homes, notice that's 95% of the population that we've sampled. So we've sampled a good amount. So this is very representative of the population. Even though we have 5,000 more homes to go, 95,000 is a good amount. And this 401,000, notice that that's pretty close to 400, right? So even though we have 5,000 more homes to go, we don't know what's going to happen then. Maybe it's going to increase that 401,000, right? So the deviation will be larger. But let's say we don't have time to do the 5,000 extra homes. From just this data, 95,000 sample size, $401,000, I would say that we don't reject the null from that. I'm pretty confident that when you sample the 5,000 other homes, when you add them in, that that sample mean is going to go towards 400,000. Now let's do one more scenario. So let's say that we sample 95,000 homes again. And let's say that the average, the sample mean this time, is 500,000. Right? So it's going to be here again. Are we going to reject the null? I would say yes. Why? Because again, we've sampled 95,000 homes, 95% 95 of the population, and we got an average in that sample of 95% of the population to be $500,000, which is a pretty big deviation from 400. Now, the 5,000 remaining homes that should be sampled, they might be in a more poor area, so they might be worth 50,000, 100,000. But even still then, do you think that that would bring the average down all the way back down to 400,000, right? Most likely not, especially if we've tried to eliminate sample bias when we are sampling these homes, right? Sample different kinds of areas. Even in the worst case scenario, if the 5,000 remaining are very low value homes, it's still probably not going to bring that 500 to that hypothesized value of 400 in the population. So in this case, I would say, yeah, we would um, reject the null that it's 400,000. And notice that the sample mean was the same here in this scenario and in this last scenario, right? This was 500,000, this was 500,000, but notice in this scenario, we didn't reject the null versus in this scenario, we did reject it. So what was the difference between these two scenarios? Because it wasn't the sample mean, it was the sample size. The reason why we felt more confident in rejecting the null in this case is because we had a larger, a much larger sample, right? Versus here, we had a smaller sample. So even though there was a deviation, we didn't feel confident enough to reject that null yet. So to make a more technical conclusion of this observation over here, as your sample size increases, right, as you get larger and larger of a sample, what happens to the acceptance and rejection regions? The acceptance region is going to decrease. There's an inverse relationship between the acceptance region and the sample size, or the rejection region is going to increase. So the way that's going to look visually, you've got this normal over here, you got this middle, the acceptance region might be like that. Right? It might be very close to that null right there. So this is the accept the null, and then this is the reject, the rejection region. This is the rejection region as well. Right? So this, is, uh, this diagram here is when n is large.
right? And as it gets larger, this acceptance region gets more narrow, right? So the criteria um, on this uh, hypothesized value gets more and more stringent, right? The less deviation there can be as n is large because we start getting more of a representation of the population versus if the sample size is low, then that acceptance region is going to be larger, right? So the rejection region is going to be smaller. It's going to take a lot for us to reject the null if the sample is small. So the way that's going to look visually is the critical values may be like out here, right? So this might be the acceptance region, right? Versus the rejection regions. They are, um, they're very small. Because we don't have enough of a sample that represents the population for us to be confident to actually reject a certain null hypothesis. So if we take these two diagrams compared to this, notice that when the sample size was large, if the sample size is large, that acceptance is more narrow. So if the 400,000 is in the middle, well notice that this 500,000, it fell outside of that more narrow acceptance region. And that's why we rejected the null, right? It fell outside of that narrow acceptance region. Versus in this case, the sample was small, right? So this is when uh, the sample is small. The 400,000, right? That's the mean in the middle. Notice that the 500,000, because that acceptance area was so large, it's still within the acceptance region. And so we can't reject the null. There's just not enough sample, that acceptance region is too large, right? And so that's how sample size affects the acceptance and rejection regions, right? When the sample size is very small, that acceptance region is uh, large, and it's going to take a lot for us to actually reject a certain null hypothesis versus if we get a large sample, right, like this, then we can um, tighten up our acceptance region, right? And so the criteria on that null becomes more and more intense. It becomes more of an intense test. And so if we got 500,000 with 95,000 sample, we could be pretty confident in rejecting that null hypothesis. But what is the problem with getting a large sample? It's costly. It takes a lot of time, resources, money, right? So that's the trade-off. Like how big of a sample do you want to get? Like we can sample, we can maybe try to get all 100,000 homes. How long is that going to take us? How much time? How many resources, right? We're going to get a more accurate conclusion about whether the null, we should accept the null or not. But the problem is, the trade-off is that it's going to take more resources.